Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your current host, Kevin Stafford, and today I have with me Alex Fischera. Alex Fischera is a former professional athlete, which I think I'll, I'll want to talk about here again in a second, a business anthropologist and culture conduit. He's the owner of Intuito Group, a general contractor for People Projects, which is an analogy I really like. And My Performance Coach, which is a training, coaching, and consulting company, uh, helping companies strive to align profits and people, which I like a good alliteration. A lot of people say that. I think Alex means it <laughs> and puts his money where his mouth is, so to speak. So Alex, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for being here. Hey, Kevin. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. And uh, yeah, everything you pointed out, uh, totally <laughs> ready to dive into them. I, 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 I like that you're intrigued and and that's what you look for in some sort of a bio is, you know, keep the crowd wanting more, right? Have them ask you a question back about something. So it's yeah, like it's I, done that. Like look, be interesting and be interested, you know, yeah, perfect. <laughs> I try to exemplify that in everything that I do, even something as simple as a, a little bio. <laughs> Got it. So let's, as I like to sometimes say, let's begin at the beginning. What got you into coaching? What really prompted you to begin your coaching practice? And you can start wherever you feel like is most appropriate, even if you were, you know, in diapers and your first thought, your first word was coach. Any, anywhere from there? <laughs> I wish, I wish it would have made the journey so much simpler, I, I guess, if I was doing it so early. But it was, you know, it kind of goes with another question that people usually ask are, or who are those, you know, significant people in your life that help shape you, mentors, other things like that. And, and, and having been an athlete at the highest level, you know, that took years and years and years of, of, of getting to it and, and, and being really in a culture of sport and being a culture of teams. And my coaches were those significant people. The coaches on the teams were the ones we were spending so much time training and, 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 and building unity and traveling together and being in certain circumstances that, that those individuals were really the ones that helped guide a lot, support, show a lot of stuff. So it was a sort of, in that way, a natural sort of connection with that role always there, but it hadn't been nurtured and tapped into. A, a lot of it also was in, in, in my home. You know, my, my father was also, is, he, had, he has his own um, company as well, doing coaching and consulting. And so I got, but before that, he was a serial entrepreneur and venture capitalist. So he had this business background as well. So, you know, I had a lot of, you know, business and, 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 and coaching and development type things on both sides of it. And, you know, in that way, it just, I, I kind of gravitated to it. So it was, it was kind of in the blood, they would say. Yeah. Family business. I like yeah. it. <laughs> and yeah, really, I like the, the, the singular focus that it takes to really excel in athletics, especially professionally, like you were saying at the highest levels, you really do have to make, you have to have the capacity to focus almost to the exclusion of everything else, but you also can't neglect the other parts of your life. Otherwise it begins to affect your, your professional yeah. athletics. And so it's really like, it's, I don't, I, I know that people have a general appreciation of what it takes to excel athletically, mm -hmm. especially professionally, but I still, I feel like not enough people understand the, the sort of multidisciplinary focus that's yeah. required. And I mean, that's, I mean, it, it almost goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway, that's exactly the kind of thing, the kind of attribute that's required to really excel at coaching because you understand what it takes. You know, it's, it's such a good foundation to work from and, and even to look back on and, 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 and grab examples that you can relate. You know, that's what got me excited to actually coach in more of a, a sort of business type environment was I, I saw them so similar. I, I, you know, I see, you know, business professionals as business athletes. You know, the, you know, the only sort of difference between an amateur player and a, and a, you know, a top tier one you know, is reps, you know, getting enough time in it. And, you know, at some level, talent will only get you so far, then you got to work on sort of those intangible sides of it. You know, it's all the same there too. But it was just about time in the in the saddle, really. And, and I use that with a lot of my coaching, because the numbers support that 75% of, of people have played some sort of recreational sport or something. And so they, they already kind of know a lot of those concepts and were trained to a certain degree and level and, you know, they're comfortable with it. So you can make that connection again and, 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 
kind of just sort of uh, translate it differently, you know, into their yeah. everyday work life. But it's a good word for it, translation, because it really yeah. is. It's not you're not having you're not right. You're not writing an original piece. You're translating it out of its uh, previous language. And it's yeah. it's a much if you can tap into it. It's just like you realize with most coaching is all you're doing as a coach is really tapping into what's already there. You add Absolutely. very little that's not already there. Mostly you're tapping into the processes and the learnings and the skills and the talents and the commitment that already exists and just needs a little bit of, you know, a little bit of oxygen to fan the flame. You said it. That's it. <laughs> so I think, I think we've kind of already covered this a little bit, but we can dig in a little bit more specifically. I like to throw this question out to a lot of coaches um, and ask me, ask you, what do you, what would you say you're doing in your coaching business specifically now that is unique? Another word might be a, a, a strong differentiator. Um, and obviously it's your athletic background that you bring to the table, but um, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about that and how that pertains to your practice in the present day. Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll give it in sort of two answers along with sort of, you know, there's that sort of, you know, what, what experiences did you have that sort of set you differently? So the, the, the being the professional athlete, my, my background in, in specialization in business anthropology and culture also kind of, I would put in that as well as that there's a sort of anthropological sort of perspective practices and principles that are intertwined, but that, that too isn't, I think, to, to your answer more specifically, the way I've approached, you know, you know, a little bit of a, of a disruptor into the, the field uh, of coaching and training and that it really hadn't moved that much in, in quite some time. And, and we really wanted to start, you know, seeing if we can take all the good things coaching and development had built upon and what, what more can we do there? One of the first things I saw was, uh, you know, coming from the sports background, there was no practice environment. I mean, we got to train four or five days a week and then have to perform on game day. So we get to try things, you know, new things, suffer consequences with no real impact type stuff. And it was like, where's the person we're coaching and training in, 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 I mean, they're nine to five and then they go home to families and, you know, the weekends, come on, you know, <laughs> so it was like, okay, there's some things here to solve. So I, I would say in, in sort of the, the unique differentiator is, is along that cultural lines is a really in tune understanding of how to integrate coaching and training into, into workflows, you know, having an adaptability where there is a sort of standard framework to which we work from, but that it can adapt to the role, to the industry, to the workflow, whether they're in person or not, and, and really leverage sort of that to, to, to kind of take coaching and training out of the sort of more, more traditional and, and allow new generations to gravitate and lift it up. You know, a lot of uh, spanning out training. So it's not this pit stop learning where it's you know, very high knowledge base. We get more experiential. We're, 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 we're taking the balance and sort of flipping it up where it was high knowledge, low experience type stuff. We're kind of flipping that paradigm up and everything's now a lot more training, getting reps with some knowledge in there as well. So that we're, you know, we, we tend to be very active coaches and I try to do that. The same training I would do for a professional athlete, I just train a professional business athlete <laughs> in, a, in a slightly less aerobic way, I would say. <laughs> I really I really do appreciate how much it's it's such a, a, a common and clear analogy, like this, you know, coaching in sports versus coaching in business. And you've just, you've taken it deeper in ways that as, as, you're, as you're speaking it out loud, it's like, of course, it seems obvious. Where's the room for practice? Hmm. super duper obvious once you start thinking about it, but you don't see a lot of that thinking manifesting into people's coaching practices right now. <laughs> thinking about like that balance of like knowledge versus experience where it's like, no, you don't spend all your time in the film room looking at tape of previous games. Yes. And you also don't spend all your time in the weight room and on the practice field, you balance it. And the balance yeah. is where the real growth can begin. And I just, it's all stuff that's like, I mean, I don't want to say it's like, you know, super duper obvious, but once you say it out loud, you're like, oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And yet I don't really see it very often out there. <laughs> well, I, I did, someone once said, you know, the quote, it was like, sometimes, even though the simplest things are the hardest to do, you know, that's the art of life is to do those simple things, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, <laughs> simplicity is one of our values. I mean, that is like, we, you know, because conceptually people can wrap around it, but the real work gets in there when, when you dive into it. So I love that's it. what I like, you know, I like to train too. So I match, <laughs> you know, my, 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 my coaching clients energy and we get after it. <laughs> I love it. Let's go, let's go one more thing real quick. I'm wondering 
what's on the horizon for you in your in your coaching practice in the next like you know like six months 12 months you know two years or whatever I don't know if you're like working on a book or if you've got a new like a new training protocol that you're about to hatch or are in the process of hatching what's what's next yeah what's next is always I mean that's a great question I'm always at what's next that's sometimes <laughs> the, the thing I gotta scale back a little bit so <laughs> gosh we've got a, a few great things things, you know, some great, great talks, you know, coming up here in the next year as well, and some new programs. What we're, we're really excited about is we've been using a digital, an AI digital role play system. We partnered with a group out of uh, Switzerland, you know, a team called Skill Gym, and they provided, you know, when I talk about experience and then bring in something like metrics, how do you measure the intangible? And then something that's so accessible to anybody something that's realistic in role play. I mean, they've done such a fantastic job creating uh, this, this AI system that allows people to kind of what we call conversational leadership, really, you know, mm -hmm. you know critical conversations are, are, are met with confidence and awareness. And uh, man, we're really excited about the new packs they have coming out for sales conversations and feedback. DE and I is already out there too, which are tough conversations to have, but we send people in there, like go after it. It's like, no, oh, train <laughs> first, and then you can go after it. So yeah, just, just a bunch of cool new things. I, I, I geek out. I, I try to stay on some of the latest stuff and what's going on, not just here locally, but globally as well. And, and that's the, the, the way I can serve my clients is, you know, keeping them in the know about what's the latest and greatest out there and, and really kind of setting them up for success. So we've got a lot of, a lot of other really good stuff coming programs to release. I love it. Cause staying on the cutting edge, but keeping everyone on common ground. That's such a, such a, a beautiful balance to strike. And it's exactly what everybody's looking for. I love those, those AI uh, conversational training uh, programs. That's, that's also stuff that I will, I, I could probably geek out on for more time than we have today. <laughs> well, call me anytime. Yeah. <laughs> but Alex, um, thank you so much. Where can people find you? Websites, socials, where's the, where's the places you like to, to meet people? Yeah, so I've got, you know, I'm on the social media, Twitter, at the Fischera, um, Instagram, LinkedIn, you know, definitely link up with me so we can we can connect and just be a part of, uh, you know, that kind of ecosphere as well. Intuitogroup.com is where, uh, you know, our, our business is located on the web. So, uh, yeah, I mean, reach out to me through any of those. I'm Conversations are, are, you know, what I like to get into. So, you know, reach out to me. This has been great. Thanks for, for taking the time to ask me some questions. And I'm sure we'll be chatting more and, and, and get to dive deeper as we go. Yeah, it was great to have you. And yeah, I feel like, like I feel like we could do a, do a few of these on all sorts of stuff. But yeah, thank you so much for, for sharing what you're up to and for, for being on the podcast. Yeah, to everybody Absolutely. also out there in the in the digital audience, thanks for joining us today. And yeah, we'll talk to all of you soon. Thanks, Ed.